Hello everyone, welcome back to Polycosm. We have a quick side quest episode for you guys today. Every time I'm doing a side quest episode, a part of me wants to make very cheesy gaming jokes about being on a quest and experience points and all that stuff. But then I don't, because I know our audience, that's you guys, are far more sophisticated than that. So let's light up our pipes, put on our smoking jackets, and settle in by the fire. In this video, we are going to use a method Christina demonstrated in a previous video to create a hand-drawn textured look for a treasure chest. I'm going to use a variety of brushes that mimic traditional media to achieve this look. In the end, we'll have a 3D asset that has a very hand-drawn and colored look to it. Let's get started. Okay, to get started, I went on Sketchfab and found this wonderful low-poly treasure chest made by Catlia. Thanks Catlia for this model. This one comes with a lovely texture already, but since I'm a monster, I'm going to get rid of that one and create my own. The steps I'll be following here are already covered in Christina's video, so I suggest you guys check that one out for a more step-by-step -step approach. But after you finish this video, of course. I'm exporting the UV unwrap as a PNG into Photoshop and adding that on top of the texture layer that came with the model. I'm keeping the original texture at a low opacity as a guide pretty much. I have one of Kyle Webster's amazing brush packs here to work with. I got this a while ago from his Gumroad. When I looked into it again as I was writing the script, I realized his brushes are now part of Adobe's Creative Cloud. So if you are already signed up with Adobe, you should have access to them, no problem. In this inkbox set, there are so many different brushes to choose from. I know I want something with a bit of texture to create that dry brush feel to it, or something that will imitate that ink bleed effect on paper. I'm going to test out a few as I'm working on this, so I'm going to get started now. When you're working with a textured brush like this one, you can adjust the flow setting up here to change how loaded your brush is. That way, you can get an even harsher texture if that's what you need. With this flow setting, the opacity of your brush doesn't get affected. As you can see, the lower your flow is, the less ink there is on your brush. I'll be tweaking this setting around now and then as I'm experimenting with other brushes. My aim here is to get a handmade ink drawing look on this model. I think it's because I started creating art with traditional media when I was a kid. I always enjoy that handmade look even in 3D art. I'm going to save my PSD now and head back to Blender. Let's load our PSD file and take a look at what we got so far. Not bad, a bit wonky in places, but yeah, no worries, just gotta keep working on it. The cool part about this workflow is you can tap back into Photoshop and keep working on your texture file, then save it, tap back to Blender and refresh the UV editor window by pressing Alt-R and voila, your new texture gets applied to your model right away. Now it's just a matter of drawing and occasionally jumping back into Blender to check how the texture is looking. For recording purposes, I'm doing this on the same screen, but if you have two monitors, definitely take advantage of that. Oh yeah, of course, I should add, you can also select planes in edit mode like this to see which part of the geometry is where on the unwrap sheet. I'll be doing this a lot to orientate myself quite often. It can be quite confusing drawing on the UV unwrap. This can also be a good opportunity to try out a new technique or maybe there is a certain style you've been studying and you wanted to try it out. In a previous video I talked about how studying certain techniques of artists you admire and then applying them to an artwork of your own can be very beneficial for your artistic growth. Check that video out if you want to hear more of my voice. I'm going to stop talking for a bit now and time-lapse the drawing process if you want to see more of that. If not, just jump ahead to the next timestamp.
this is slowly getting there. I'm, I'm quite happy with it so far. I'm just going to remove the UV unwrap lines as well and see how the whole thing is looking. Yeah, not bad, but I think the line work needs to be stronger in parts. So I'm going to go over some of the edges and keep working on it until I'm satisfied. Why the hell not? Let's add some color. I'm going to block some flat colors out, then create a new layer on top to paint some texture. To keep within our theme, I'm switching over to Kyle's paint box this time, and I'll be using some watercolor and gouache brushes. I'm trying to steer away from that very digital look as much as I can. You can also easily use some adjustment layers to change the colors around in your texture file. This way, you can explore different options and create alternate versions for your model. Let's add some fancy lights and pull a quick render so we'll have a nice image to use in the thumbnail. And no, we are not going to be pixelating that image in the thumbnail. We don't do that here. We know better. And there it is! I'm quite happy with the result, I think. I, I just personally really like seeing 3D art that has a handmade, a traditional look to it. I can totally imagine doing a whole environment with this technique, or maybe even try this for a character. I hope this video was useful to you, and if you create something with this method and share it on social media, feel free to tag us in your post, we'd love to see it. Thanks for your time, and take care everyone!